And it has the light principle of Ahura Mazda and the dark principle of Adiman on the other side. And they are equally balanced and they are constantly fighting one another. My God has it all. Our God has all the creation. Our God gives all to us. Whether we feel them as a blessing or whether we feel them as a curse, we have to reach the stage where we can give thanks to God for it. I pray that I can give thanks to God for my HIV. I pray that I can give thanks to God for my nervous breakdown when I was a teenager. I pray that I can give thanks to God for the pain I feel in my neck. We can do anything. 
So we divided the entire country into blockhouses, joined up with barbed wire. And then the British Army swept through like a pheasant shoot. And all the women and children were driven into concentration camps. And any men that were found were taken as prisoners of war. Hundreds of thousands of women and children died of privation in those concentration camps. Hundreds of thousands. They weren't executed. They just starved and died of dysentery and typhus and everything else. But for most of the British people back at home, they weren't monsters. They weren't wicked. They just told themselves that war was justified because they'd been attacked. So today at one o'clock, when I said my prayers at the beginning of the Requiem Mass, as I will again at the beginning of communion today, I prayed for all the victims of 9-11. Because as I live and breathe, there are many more of them than those that died in New York on that day. There are hundreds of thousands of them. Many of them in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, this does not come from evil. It comes from self-hatred, from fear, from the lack of that solidity deep within you that knows who you are and what you are and does not fear. And because of that, we do terrible things. Now, my own personal experience is that I had this extraordinary revelation on the banks of Lake Superior. And that's wonderful, and that's fine, and that's dandy. And I can tell you about it, and I can testify about it. And I can also tell you that my entire concept of love has been twisted until that moment, probably, that I tried to do what I thought was love to other people. And it was going through the motions of, of learned kindness to other people. But until you really value yourself, it's very hard to value anyone else. Until you really love yourself, and until you really appreciate how costly that love is. That love is not cheap. That love isn't a word. It's not a silly card with a heart in it. It's something devastatingly difficult. It's something that goes straight to the heart of the matter and says, I keep no record of wrongs. Not as long as there's an excuse. As long as you didn't really mean it. Or as long as it can be made all right very quickly. I keep no record of wrongs. Forgiveness depends upon something actually being done in the first place. When you excuse something, you're not forgiving it. You're saying it didn't really happen. To forgive, you have to accept, yes, it happened. Yes, it was terrible. Yes, it hurt me. Yes, it was unpleasant. Yes, I hated it. Yes, it caused me pain. And I will keep no record of this wrong. It doesn't mean that you cannot protect yourself. It's a spiritual thing. It's deep within you. Do you nurse that wrong like a viper within you? Do you play it over and over in your head? Do you seek revenge? Because, you know, it was said to me as a kid that that line in Scripture, revenge is mine, said the Lord, was encouraging revenge. But of course it says revenge is mine. Mine! Judgment is mine! And of course, Scripture, and especially the New Testament, is really hot on this. Thou shalt not judge, because it's not yours. It's not yours to judge. It's not your business. You don't have the abilities. You don't have the sight. In order to be able to judge, you need to be omniscient. You need to be all-seeing. We are not all-seeing, therefore we judge horribly. Horribly and terribly. And free will claim. And free will claim. Well, you know, the golden rule upon which this rests, the golden rule of reciprocity, as they call it, do unto others as you would have them do unto yourself. I have to be honest with you, it's not a Christian creed. It's not. It's common to almost every single creed on earth, and certainly all the world religions. The golden rule is found in the Baha'i faith, Buddhism, Christianity, Confucianism, Hinduism, secular humanism, or I suspect I might be borrowed there, Islam, Jainism, Judaism, Mohism, I had to look that one up, Sikhism, and Taoism. All of them have the golden rule at their heart. All of them have what we know is a teaching of Jesus at their heart.